Hello everybody, Dave here back again today with another opening video. Today we are going to be doing part two of the Karo Khan, Play the Karo Khan, my favorite opening. So I'm doing a little bit of a video series on this. If you haven't checked out part one, please do so. It's on the Knight C3 variation, the classical main line. Uh, and today we're going to be doing the advanced variation because I've heard a lot of comments from you guys that you guys get the advanced a lot. It's the most common thing at your level and I get it quite a bit too. So I figured I'd share some insights on the advanced variation. But before we jump into the video, I'd like to remind you guys to like the video, comment, and subscribe. Every single thumbs up helps me a ton, as does every comment and subscription. Uh, and before we jump into the video, I will say that the comment question of the day, leave your response in the comments below, is what is your favorite defense against 1e4 and would you consider adding the Karo Khan to your repertoire? Okay, then without further ado, let's jump right in. The advanced variation of the Karo Khan arises after e4, c6, d4, d5, and white plays pawn to e5, advancing the pawn. Now here I'm going to show you guys two main options that you have from this very position. Uh, the first option, which those of you Karo Khan players may be familiar with, is bishop to f5. And this is by far the most common way to go for the black pieces. You'll see at the top GM level, a lot of grandmasters, including Mamadiarov, Ali Reza Faruja, a lot of these top guys, Fabiana Caruana, they're all playing bishop to f5. So if you're a starting Karo Khan player, I have to recommend this move to you as well. Basically, the idea is we want to close up the pawn structure, create this really nice pyramid of pawns, and lock our bishop outside of it. So we're not getting a French-like structure with the bishop stuck on c8, but instead a much better version of the French defense with our bishop out here on f5. That's the whole point of this variation. Now, white has a couple options here, and I'm going to walk you guys through your options against all of them. My point here is not to go too in-depth in one variation, but show you guys all the possibilities so that you can decide for yourselves uh, number one, what you want to play, and number two, you'll know uh, all the options that your opponents have at their disposal. So here, one thing that white can do is knight to f3, and this is what most of your opponents will do. Uh, this is a main line of sorts, and what you do here is you continue with your plan. You go pawn to e6, and the idea behind this move is just like I mentioned, closing down the center with our bishop outside of the pawn chain. Now white simply plays bishop e2 with the idea of castling, and we go knight to e7, possibly intending to jump to g6, uh, protecting this bishop on f5, and a lot of the times in the Karo Khan, you'll see our knights come to e7 and d7 with the idea of playing this knight to c6. And you might be thinking, how do we get this knight to c6? There's a pawn there. But what we do is we go knight to d7, then we go c5, and knight to c6. And slowly but surely our knights get put in the best possible places to pressure the center. So that's what you want to do in this position, knight e7 and c5. Now, depending on what level you're at, your opponents will either play pawn to c3, defending their pawn chain in the center, or pawn to c4. These are the two main moves in this position. Now, you have to be a little bit careful. Pawn to c4 is a little bit more dynamic than pawn to c3 because white is immediately attacking the center and saying that, okay, if you're not going to castle and I'm already castled, then I'm going to do everything in my power to take advantage of your uncastled king. That's what white wants to do here. In this position, you simply allow everything to resolve in the center. You go knight to c6, basically throw the ball back into white's court and say, what are you going to do in the center? Show me your plan. And if white does something like d takes on c5, now black already has a really good position after pawn to d4. So we're essentially sacrificing a pawn in the interest of getting a passed pawn. And this passed pawn is actually very strong. White needs to be very, very careful. For example, simple development like knight to d2 fails because black goes pawn to d3 and your bishop here is already trapped. So white has to be very careful in this position, and the advanced d-pawn is very powerful. There's a nice game here where Anand played black, so if you're interested, go and check that out as well. But okay, a very natural move for white is pawn to c3, just protecting the center, 
And here we can do just like I said. We can go knight to d7, knight to c6, and we get this French structure on steroids. Uh, it's just a much better version of the French defense. Our knights are on the classic French squares, pressuring the center. This knight holding d4 down, and this knight holding e5 down. Uh, one of the classic ideas we want to do here is a6, preparing b5. Uh, we also have queen to b6 in these positions, putting pressure on both d4 and b2. And the magic here is that none of our minor pieces are actually bad. They all have great potential, especially this guy that's out on f5, compared to the French defense where the bishop is stuck here on c8. Imagine this position with the bishop on c8, and that's basically what a French defense is. So we get a better version of a French in this variation. Now, another thing that white can do here is go pawn to h4. And this is a very, very sharp variation. I know that uh, Praganandana has played this with the white pieces with pretty good success. And here, a lot of black players will autopilot play h5, giving white exactly what they want. A nice g5 squared that they can sink their bishop's teeth into. But here, we're actually going to defy the norm and play pawn to h6. This is the variation that I'm going to recommend to you guys. And the idea here is we go on a bit of a king run. Pawn to g4 is played. Now we go uh, bishop into e4. f3, the bishop drops back. And e6. So we see white really taking advantage of the, of the misplaced bishop on h7. But we're going to argue that it's totally fine and that it's okay that our bishop is on h7 because we are going to actually take this pawn back with our king. So the idea here is to go queen out to d6 and after captures, we simply take back with our king and claim that we have a good position. So our bishop is already developed. It's attacking the c2 pawn. Our queen on d6 supports the e5 break and threatens queen into g3. So black has a lot of really good active play here and can be envied. Uh, a common white try is pawn to f4 and with the idea of holding down e5, stopping queen to g3. But just look at this position after knight to d7. White has only pushed their pawns and overextended in the process. Whereas we already have three of our pieces out, our king cannot be easily attacked by any white piece and we're kind of cruising here. We're just bringing out all our pieces. Our queen can give a really nasty check on this e6 square. So we're doing A-OK -okay here with the black pieces. Okay, now another variation that white can try here is knight to d2. And uh, this is the third of four things that white can do in this bishop f5 line. And here I'm going to recommend the ding liren approach. So similar to the other lines, black is going to put their knights here on d7 and e7. This is our main idea. Now, what you want to do with the black pieces is consider which of your minor pieces are you okay with trading off for some sort of advantage. Uh, and the best way to think about this position, although that question might be a little complicated for those of you who are just starting out with the Karo Khan or just starting out with chess, the idea that I'm trying to get at here is we want to put our pawns on light squares. So we want to go h5 and g6, possibly bring our knight into the f5 square. And basically, if we get that position, all of our pawns are going to be on light squares, barring, barring just one, which could also come to a6 in the future. So if all of our pawns are on light squares, the bishop that we really want to keep is our dark square bishop, because it can easily weave through the pawns. Uh, but more importantly, the bishop that we're okay with giving away is the light square bishop, which is just going to struggle with all our pawns on light squares. Its mobility isn't going to be as good. So in this position, the move that we play is bishop to g4. And this line, although it may seem similar to the other line, the first line I showed with knight f3, bishop e2 castles, is slightly different because white has already spent two tempi on bringing the knight to this b3 square where it stops us from going c5. So our c5 idea, because it's harder to get in, we go for something else here. Bishop to g4 with the idea of just simply bringing the knight into f5, expanding on the king side, and if we need to, giving up our light square bishop. h3, bishop takes, bishop takes, and we can even go g6 with ideas of h5 and queen h4. We have a pretty good attack on the king side. So this is the idea in this variation. 
Okay, and the fourth and final thing that white will do against bishop to f5, uh, at least if we're talking about common approaches, is knight to c3. And this is a very, very aggressive way to play for the white player. So I do recommend going in and studying this as much as you can because it will be very valuable to you to study this line. But I'll just show you generally how this position can go. We go e6, the move that we play in pretty much all these lines. And now white starts attacking with pawn to g4. Now we're obliged to bring our bishop back to g6. There's really no better square for it. And here white really wants to continue the attack. But the key is the knight doesn't go to f3 here. The knight actually goes to the e2 square. Uh, this is where we want to put it with white because our knight has the potential to go to f4. Uh, and this is the whole point behind our play. So we go pawn to c5. We just start breaking things up in the center. And now white proceeds with their idea. They go pawn to h4 and they start attacking. Okay, now we go pawn out to h5. Usually when our opponent plays h4 and g4, we've got to respond. We can't just let our bishop get trapped. Now knight to f4. We go bishop back to h7. And this is a line that you should really look into some more. And the whole idea here is that black is giving up this pawn, but in exchange, we are getting control of the center. So we can even go knight to c6 here or c takes d4, and we have very solid control of the central squares, namely because white can't easily establish this pawn chain. And this pawn chain in the center here is going to get broken very easily after the simple cd. And although we're down a pawn, look at our bishop on h7, eyeing c2, our knight on c6 does a great job of pressuring d4 and e5, uh, and we have a nice open file for our rook if our opponent's knight ever moves off it. So I think we can claim that we are completely fine here and we've equalized with the black pieces. At least we have dynamic equality, lots of chances here to make the position complicated. So okay, those are the main things in the bishop f5 line. Now, if you're still watching and you're thinking, I don't really love those positions in the bishop f5 line. It feels like my position is a little bit cramped in all these lines. I totally get you. Uh, the Karl Khan requires a certain level of mastery and comfort with the positions that can sometimes be a little bit hard to understand. So if you are a beginning player and you don't really feel too comfortable in those positions with less space, I'm going to give you an alternative. You can go c5 in this position. And this is a very interesting idea. It's actually a pawn sacrifice. Now, there are two main ways for white to play in this very position. White can either go c3 or d takes on c5. Now, first, we're going to cover c3. And this move is actually a little bit of a mistake. Believe it or not, it's only, what, move four? And white's already committing a bit of a mistake in this position. And the idea for white is pretty simple. It's this idea that I've mentioned throughout the video that... You get this pawn structure, b2, c3, d4, e5. Every pawn is supporting the other one. Uh, and it seems like white has a really great pawn chain. But again, we see the idea here for black is we get a slightly better version of a French defense. So we get this classic French structure with pressure on the center, queen b6 ideas, knight to e7, knight f5. We have all these ideas to pressure the center. And uh, our bishop is out on g4 instead of on c8. Uh, and what's more in this position is not only do we have a better French defense with the bishop out of this cage on c8, but this knight on f3 is actually a very important piece for white in that it protects the d4 square. So what black is really interested in is trading off this bishop that would have otherwise been really, really bad on c8 for this really good knight on f3. And oftentimes in these positions, we actually just end up winning a pawn with black. Like so. We eliminate the knight on f3, which was a key defender of the center. And then our pieces easily scoop up this pawn. Not to mention we have multiple other ways of putting on the pressure in the center should white find a defense of this pawn. So okay, this is the c5 variation if white goes c3. Now what white should do, and if they're a more advanced player, a more experienced player, what they will do is d takes on c5. And here I'm going to show you a pretty cool gambit line. So the idea here is we go e6, and you might be thinking, oh, I, I just said all this stuff about getting the bishop out of the cage. Well, there is a point to this. We want to attack the pawn right away, 
and we're going to claim that our bishop is okay coming out to d7. So the line here is bishop to e3 defending the pawn on c5. Now we can't take it right away. So we actually play this cool move knight to h6. Now if you guys watched my Lempert Gambit video, you'll know that I'm a fan of this knight h6 move with the idea of coming into f5 and causing utter chaos. And uh, it's okay if white takes this knight, rips it off the board, because after we capture, we have the bishop pair number one. Number two, we're likely regaining one of our pawns back, whether it be the C pawn or the E pawn. Just a simple knight to D7 trick does, does what we need it to. And three, we have the open G file. So it's going to be tough for our opponent's king to find safety. Uh, and you could say that, you could argue that we're not going to be able to castle kingside either. But with the two bishops, with this advantage, we're going to want to open the center and play a dynamic game anyways. So that's completely all right. Now the main line here is for white to go pawn to c3, and the idea becomes apparent in a second. After knight to f5, white's bishop wants to come to d4 like so. Uh, and the, the point of this bishop d4 is that if the black knight takes, white takes back with the pawn and fixes the pawn structure in the center, although he's giving up the bishop pair. So here we just bring out our bishop to d7, knight to f3, knight to c6, and we see a very typical Karo Khan structure. Although it's an atypical position, we see a typical structure. You know, this pawn chain here, the C pawn is gone. Uh, and the reason that I call this a bit of a gambit is because right here, after knight to d2, what, uh, what black wants to do is just give up on winning the pawn. You're not going to win this pawn back too easily. If you go queen to a5, there's always going to be b4 and there's going to be knight to b3. So it's going to be tough for you to regain this pawn. But what you can do instead is capture. White takes back with the C pawn so as to protect his center. And now just go B6. So we're playing this like a true gambit. And it's surprisingly hard for white to defend this. Number one, we're attacking two pawns at once. So white is already in a fork. He needs to find something to do here already. So we're threatening to win our pawn back. Number two, we have the two bishops. We have the bishop on D7 and the bishop on E7. So in an open position, although the center is closed, these files are all open, this should be able to favor us, especially if we can somehow open up the center. And number three, if white tries to, or sorry, number four, if white tries too hard to, uh, to defend like this, we have a sneaky little check. So white isn't really defending this position as well as they would like to. Uh, this position is actually very tricky, and all of a sudden white can be much, much worse right out of the opening. So if you want something sharp and dynamic where you don't lack as much space, I would recommend this c5 variation. Another thing to look into in this c5 variation would have to be just giving the pawn back with knight to f3, but you can just take the pawn and black is completely fine. I won't harp on this too much because it's not the most common way to play for white, but basically you just want to get your pieces out, bishop back to b6, uh, knight out to c6, and both sides castle and are happy. We can often go for knight g6 in this position, put pressure on the e5 pawn, and all our minor pieces are doing all right. So this is a position that we can take uh, with comfort. So to recap a little bit, in the advanced variation, I gave you guys two main options here, bishop to f5 and pawn to c5. And these are the two main things that black does against the advanced variation. Uh, if you're just starting out with the Karo Khan, You'll see a lot more bishop f5 in games that you look at, grandmasters that play this variation, uh, and this is a really good line, this bishop f5. So I'd recommend looking at the likes of Vichy Anand, Fabiano Caruana, uh, Anatoly Karpov. All of these guys are awesome at the Karo Khan, and they all play this bishop f5. But if you're looking for something to spice up the game, definitely look into this c5 variation. Alright guys, I hope that this Karo Khan video was helpful. If you got some value from this, please make sure to like the video, drop a comment, uh, and subscribe to the channel. We're on the road to 1k subscribers. I'm confident we can do it. Uh, thanks so much guys as always, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.